Sniff around, my sweet. They might be lurking in a corner. It was Filch, speaking to Mrs. Norris. Horror struck, Harry waved madly at the other three to follow him as quickly as possible. They scurried silently towards the door away from Filch's voice. Neville's robes had barely whipped around the corner when they heard Filch enter the trophy room. They're in here somewhere, they heard him mutter, probably hiding. This way, Harry mouthed to the others, and petrified, they began to creep down a long gallery full of suits of armor. They could hear Filch getting nearer. Neville suddenly let out a frightened squeak and broke into a run. He tripped and grabbed Ron around the waist, and a pair of them toppled right into the suit of armor. The clanging and crashing were enough to wait the whole castle. Run, Harry yelled, and the four of them sprinted down the gallery, not looking back to see whether Filch was following. They swung around the doorpost and galloped down one corridor, then another, Harry in the lead without any idea where they were going. They ripped through the tapestry and found themselves in a hidden passageway, hurtled along it, and came out near the charms classroom, which they knew was miles away from the trophy room. I think we lost him, Harry panted. I told you, Hermione gasped, clutching at the stitch in her chest. I told you. We've got to get back to Gryffindor Tower, said Ron, quickly as possible. Malfoy tricked you, Hermione said to Harry. You realize that, don't you? He was never going to meet you. Filch knew somebody was going to be in the trophy room. Malfoy must have tipped him off. Harry thought she was probably right, but he wasn't going to tell her that. Let's go. It wasn't going to be that simple. They hadn't gone more than a dozen places when a doorknob rattled and something came shooting out of the classroom in front of them. It was Peeves. He caught sight of them and then gave a squeal of delight. Shut up, Peeves. Please, you'll get us thrown out. Peeves cackled. Wandering around at midnight, icky first years. <laughs> naughty, naughty, you'll get caughty. Not if you don't give us away, Peeves, please. Should tell fit. Filch, I should, said Peeves in a saintly voice, but his eyes glittered wickedly. It's for your own good, you know. Get out of the way, snapped Ron, taking a swipe at Peeves. This was a big mistake. Students out of bed, Peeves bellowed. Students out of bed down the charms corridor. Ducking under Peeves, they ran for their lives, right to the end of the corridor where they slammed into a door. It was locked. This is it. Ron moaned. We're done for. This is the end. When they could hear footsteps, Filch running as fast as he could towards Peeves' shout. Ugh, move over, said Hermione. She grabbed Harry's wand, tapped the lock, and whispered, Alohomora. The lock clipped, and the door swung open. They piled through it, shut it quickly, and pressed their ears against it, listening. Which way did Peeves go? Which way did they go, Peeves? said Filch. Tell me quickly. Here's a picture of Peeves. Say please. Don't mess around, Peeves. Now where do they go? Shan't say nothing if you don't say please, said Peeves in his annoying singing voice. All right, please. Nothing. Ha 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 ha. Told you I wouldn't say nothing if you didn't say please. <laughs> and then they heard the sound of Peeves wishing away and Filch cursing in rage. He thinks this door is locked, Harry whispered. I think we're okay. Get off of me, Neville. For Neville had been tugging on the sleeve of Harry's dressing gown for the last minute. What? Harry turned around and saw quite clearly what. For a moment, he was sure he walked into a nightmare. This was too much, on top of everything that had happened so far. They weren't in a room, as he supposed. They were in a corridor the forbidden corridor on the third floor, and now they knew why it was forbidden. They were looking straight into the eyes of a monstrous dog. A dog filled the whole space between the ceiling and the floor. It had three heads, three pairs of rolling mad eyes, three noses, twitching and quivering in their direction, three drooly mouths, saliva hanging on slippery ropes from yellow fangs. It was standing quite still, all six eyes were staring at them, and Harry knew that the only reason they weren't dead was the sudden appearance they had taken it by surprise, but it was quickly getting over that, and there was no mistaking what those thunderous growls meant. Harry groped for the doorknob. Between Filch and death, he would take Filch. They fell backwards. Harry slammed the door shut, and they ran. They almost flew back down the corridor. Filch must have hurried off to look for him somewhere else, 
but they didn't see him anywhere. But they hardly cared. All they wanted to do was put as much space as possible between them and that monster. They didn't stop running until they reached the portrait of the fat lady on the seventh floor. What on earth have you all been doing? She asked, looking at their dressing gowns hanging off their shoulders, their flushed, sweaty faces. Never mind that. Pig snout, pig snout, panted Harry. The portrait swung forward. They scrambled into the common room and collapsed, trembling into armchairs. It was a while before any of them said anything. Neville, indeed, looked as if he'd never speak again. What do you think they're doing, keeping a thing like that locked up in the school? Ron said finally. If any dog needs exercise, that one does. Hermione got uh, both her breath and her bad temper back again. You don't use your eyes, do you? Any of you, she snapped. Didn't you see what it was standing on? The floor? Harry suggested. I wasn't looking at its feet. I was too busy with its heads. No, not the floor. It was standing on a trap door. Obviously, it's guarding something. She stood up, glaring at them. I hope you're pleased with yourselves. We could have all been killed, or worse, expelled. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to bed. Ron stared after her with his mouth open. No, we don't mind, he said. You think we dragged her along, wouldn't you? But Hermione had given Harry something else to think about as he climbed back into the bed. The dog was guarding something. What had Hagrid said? Gringotts was the safest place in the world when he wanted to hide something, except perhaps Hogwarts? It looked as though Harry had found out where the grubby little package from Vault 713 was. That was chapter nine. Hope you guys enjoyed.